All right. So I think that's most of the housekeeping things. So first up we have James Burns. So James is the founder and president of the South Branch Park Advisory Council. He is a Chicagoan and Bridgeport resident, serves on the local school council as a community representative and is program director for the Kennedy Forum, a mental health advocacy and policy organization. He is a proud husband and father of two young daughters. So with that, James, would you like to carry that conversation forward and throw a PowerPoint up? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate it. Uh, and Anna, good to see you again. I know we've met on a couple of occasions over the years. Um, and on the point of being a father, I have a, a almost four-year-old right in front of me coloring on the floor. Mom is doing a meeting upstairs with the 21-month-old. Um, so if little people pop in, I hope you don't mind. Uh, it's just life uh, as a parent during the pandemic right now. Uh, so, and Aaron, I want to be sure I am respectful of time. What's my window look like here? And be honest with me. <laughs> oh, we're hoping maybe, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes. Sure. Got it. All right. All right, cool. And then let me share my screen really quick here. Uh, I have a presentation just so you don't have to look at me talking. You can look at my um, beautiful pictures of the work that I do at South Branch Park Advisory Council. Okay, and then. Mm -hmm. Okay, how does that look? Can I get a thumbs up from someone? Looks great. Great, thank you, thank you. So my name is James Burns, as Aaron said. Uh, that was a really warm welcome. It's almost as if I wrote that myself, um, but uh, I'm happy to be here. I was really happy that Aaron reached out and happy that I could uh, connect with this group of folks because um, there are a lot of people who call um, the waterways in the Chicagoland area home uh, in some way, shape or form, whether it's a hobby or whether it's what you do um, as a volunteer or even as a professional. And uh, the reach is oftentimes um, confounding because there, there's just so many people uh, spread out over this great uh, region who, who do some great work. So uh, the opportunity to connect with you guys, to share a little bit about what I do, but also the opportunity to hear from others uh, was an opportunity that I could not pass up. So thanks so much for the invite, Aaron. Uh, and uh, South Branch PAC, PAC um, stands for Park Advisory Council. Uh, and uh, some people confuse that, that like we're a political action committee. Uh, we are decidedly uh, apolitical, unless uh, you know we need something from the alderman's office, uh, then I, I put on my, my uh, butt kissing shoes, if you will. Um, I'm gonna make a lot of jokes, I'm sorry in advance for that. Um, but it's just part of my, my shtick, I guess. So um, this look, by the way, uh, oops, let me go back really quick. Hold on. This is the look where um, from the confluence of the South Branch to the Chicago River, uh, Bubbly Creek is like directly in front of you and runs to your right, and that runs directly south. Uh, and then if you were uh, to your left there um, is actually where the Sanitarian Ship Canal begins. Uh, and this picture is taken from Canal Origins Park, which is actually where the first shovel full of dirt was dug for the INM Canal. So, who we are? We are volunteers from the community. Um, we are, I was the founder uh, and I am the president currently. Uh, and we just connected originally with people who live um, in the community. And this is, we're kind of tucked away in the Northwest corner of Bridgeport. Uh, you can see Park 571, which is that green space on the right-hand side of that map. That's um, our home, um, and that is the home of the Eleanor Street Boathouse, which is a uh, Jeannie Gang-designed boathouse. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know Jeannie Gang, um, Google her. She is incredible, uh, and um, it is an incredible space for us to call our home. In addition to Park 571, we are also stewards for a handful of parks nearby, and of interests specific to this group is Canal Origins Park, again, where that picture was taken that I just showed you, which is just across the South Fork of the Chicago River, AKA Bubbly Creek, and then the Canal Port River Walk, which is that long, thin stretch um, where the uh, Sanitarian Ship Canal begins. 
Um, if you are directly north of the river here, by the way, you are in uh, Pilsen. If you are west of Bubbly Creek and south of um, the river, you are in McKinley Park. Uh, and if you were in the, uh, the southeast corner there, you were in Bridgeport. So uh, it's like a confluence of, of quite a bit of uh, activity and neighborhoods. Um, we're near an orange line uh, L stop. There's a lot of bus uh, traffic. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of industry. So it's this really interesting part of the city uh, that has undergone quite a bit of change and will continue to uh, undergo quite a bit of change moving forward. But I should note that when I started the Park Advisory Council, we were focused on primarily building community. Uh, it was an opportunity just to uh, connect with people in the neighborhood, uh, find out what it is that they were interested in from a program perspective, uh, but it grew to be so much more than that. And I'll share a little bit more of that uh, as we go along here. So what do we do? Our mission is to promote inclusive use of the park district's programs at 571 and any of the other lake, uh, local parks, which are underneath our purview. Um, we do a ton of collaboration. Uh, as a park advisory council, we are technically under the umbrella of the Chicago Park District, uh, but we work with so many other folks like the elected officials. There's a lot of rowing organizations that actually call the boathouse their home and we uh, collaborate with them closely. We connect with the local schools. Benito Juarez High School is just north of the river here. Um, the Al Paseo Trail, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, uh, is also uh, slowly taking place in Pilsen. Um, and then Ping Tom Park is a little northeast, northeast, northeast of us, excuse me, uh, along the Chicago River uh, in Chinatown. So there's, a, again, a lot of collaboration that happens because there is nothing that we are going to do that isn't going to have some sort of impact on um, the local community, um, even if it's uh, a mile upstream. Uh, and you'll see the picture here is a uh, movies in the parks that we hosted a couple of years ago. You know, there's probably like 75 uh, people at the this uh, particular event. So we like to do those types of things. You know, we want to connect with people and just be um, a, a source of community, right? We do pumpkin patches and, and Easter bunny uh, egg finding things. Uh, so we just try to have fun and, and connect people uh, in any way that we can. Um, and we also want to be sure that we are um, really listening and bringing people to the table. We have uh, um, regular meetings on uh, Wednesdays um, uh, every month, I should say every other month. And, um, you know, those are formal, uh, but we just provide people a chance to come in and talk about what it is that they're doing in the community. You know why we're here. Um, just this, this is kind of broadly still. Uh, we have great assets. There's the the boathouse from uh, the river. Um, we have a ton of green space that's uh, available to us, and these are primarily um, underutilized green spaces, especially for this part of the city. Uh, if you were to look at what's happening on the north branch of the Chicago River relative to what's happening uh, on our branch of the river, it's two very different stories. Um, and we want to try and uh, leverage that, right, and find a way to make a positive impact as it relates to uh, the south branch and coming developments. There is a lot of momentum around this. This started way back in uh, Mayor Emanuel's administration, um, where I think he began to frame the river, um, the lake as our front yard and the river as our backyard. Um, and that was part of the reason why I started this, understanding that there was going to be a lot of uh, eyes and ears and resources that were going to be turning towards uh, the Chicago River and finding ways to access it and activate it in ways that had never happened before. And um, we are always, we have uh, created a formal uh, framework plan and uh, we continue to take feedback from people because we believe that as people come to us and share their ideas, um, that we continue to uh, uh, evolve in what the, the parks and the South Branch of the Chicago River could be. Uh, so um, I'm happy to share that link to that framework plan, by the way. Uh, it was a massive undertaking, but um, a great piece of work that um, has uh, actually um, borne out into a feasibility study for a pedestrian bridge over Bubbly Creek, which if you told me I was going to be uh, kind of uh, spearheading that effort when I started the Park Advisory Council, I would have told you that uh, you've lost it, right? So let's jump to the next slide here and let's really talk about why we're here today. Um, very good, honey. Thank you. Keep going. Oh, can you start a new page? 
uh, she likes the spotlight, everybody. Uh, she knows what's up. Uh, but let's talk about river and park cleanups. You know, we, we do a whole bunch of stuff and, and we don't have the, the time to discuss it all. But one of the main things that we do and probably uh, the thing that we uh, really jumped off on right away were river and park cleanups. We didn't have to have a fully formed idea about what we wanted to be and how we wanted to connect because we had the river and we had the parks that were right at our disposal. And people are always interested in helping their community by ways of cleanups, right? So um, here are just some of the best pictures. Uh, these kind of rose to the top when I was pulling this together for this talk today uh, of people who have come out um, in our, our efforts to clean up the park and the river. Um, as you can see, uh, there's a bunch of young folks that are here. And especially if you look at that large picture um, or that large group of people in the picture on the bottom right, um, for some people, it's a family day, right? You go out with the entire family and uh, you give back and you pick up garbage. And by the way, there is not a shortage of uh, junk and trash uh, that is located in this part of the river. Um, as many of you I'm sure know, Bubbly Creek is very notorious for being a very polluted waterway, perhaps uh, one of the most polluted waterways in North America. Uh, so these pictures are really great because it just shows you some of the manpower uh, that we've been able to bring out. Uh, and I don't want to take too much credit because uh, the river and the parks uh, sell themselves. And, um, you know, having a beautiful park and a beautiful river uh, is also an easy selling point. So here are some of the, the nitty gritties around the river and the park cleanups. Um, again, these are things that I, we picked up upon immediately because they were low hanging fruit. It was very simple to do. Um, and uh, the first two points here, the, the Earth Day pickups and then the Chicago River Day pickups, uh, we've done them um, every single year since South Branch Park Advisory Council became uh, an organization. And uh, with the exception of 2020, um, just due to uh, the pandemic. Um, but every April and then a few weeks later in May, uh, we would get out there and um, Earth Day was organized through the Chicago Park District. Uh, and it always was, uh, I think, the Saturday before April 22nd, actually. Um, and we would organize uh, to get people out and we would provide them with materials, uh, rakes, garbage pickers, gloves, trash bags, things like that. Um, give them a little bit of guidance and then say, go. That's also the beauty of uh, park cleanups and river cleanups. It's not too complicated, right? Just make sure that you're safe at all times uh, and, and put that garbage into a bag. And then, you know, we'll have the city come by and pick it up later. Um, just some quick back of envelope math. Uh, over 100 volunteers have participated in our Earth Day cleanups uh, since 2016. Uh, and I'm lowballing that number, that's for sure. Um, as a, a volunteer, uh, South Branch Park Advisory Council president by night, um, I, I probably need to, to sharpen up my record keeping, but uh, well north of 100 volunteers uh, for the Earth Day cleanups. And uh, then through the Chicago River Day, um, we're lucky because we get to co collaborate with the uh, Friends of the Chicago River. Um, and they do this across the entire uh, Chicago River. Um, and I think just like the, the Chicago region, uh, even like on the Calumet and, and places like that. And uh, it's really exciting because for those particular days, you're pulling people from all over uh, the area. It's not just people from Bridgeport or Pilsen or Chinatown or McKinley Park or Little Village. Uh, these are folks who are coming from the suburbs even, um, who think, hey, this is a good reason to jump in the car on a Saturday morning and go help out a community um, and help out the river and help out the parks. Um, we have co-captains, many of these sites around Chicago River Day. Um, over the years. Uh, and um, it's safe to say again that this number is underreported, but well over 200 people who have contributed to these cleanups um, over the many years that we've been able to do it. Um, and again, these all center around uh, that little, uh, that photograph I showed you, that aerial from the Google Maps of Park 571 Canal Origins and Canal Port uh, Riverwalk. Um, Due to the fact that we are located right near Bubbly Creek, um, for anybody who doesn't know, when it rains too much in Chicago, or even if uh, there's too much melting snow, um, there Chicago has a combined sewer system, which means that if there is enough sewage, um, in order to uh, avoid 
flooding people's basements, uh, the NWRD will actually open up um, uh, their basins and release the, that untreated water back into the water system. So um, Bubbly Creek can be, a, and there's a release right there, it can be a filthy, filthy place uh, after uh, a wet spring or a, a wet winter as well. Um, really disgusting things. So these people are doing yeoman's work, um, picking up the trash. It's not just like, uh, you know, Gatorade bottles or um, empty bags of chips. There's plenty of that, but there's also some gross stuff too. Um, and then, uh, you know, so the the pandemic really kind of brought everything to a screeching halt. I don't have to uh, belabor that point, but cleanup days with Chicago River and then the Earth Days, those were on pause because the world just felt really, really uh, different. Uh, last spring. But uh, the Chicago Parks Foundation, who is our fiscal sponsor, uh, they organized an It's Your Park Day, uh, which was basically an effort to get people outside um, to build community and also then to pick up the parks because, um, you know, we didn't have that, uh, that usual touch point that we had had for, uh, for many, many years. So uh, over the summer, uh, we hosted two separate It's Your Parks Days where we um, reached out to um, groups of people uh, to, to come out to the park and pick up the trash uh, and kind of build some community. Um, obviously, this was a little bit different than it was for the other um, cleanups, just because of the safety concerns related to COVID-19. Um, but we had, uh, so we kept those groups really small. Um, also, people were less willing to volunteer their time, um, but we kept those groups small. Um, and made sure that they had the gloves and the masks and, and the other materials that they typically would have to do some cleanups. Um, and uh, it was great, you know, uh, small but mighty for sure. Uh, and people who were able to come out and join us really uh, enjoyed the time. Uh, and there's that tangible benefit. It's like vacuuming, right? Everybody loves the vacuum. Well, I shouldn't say that, but there's that, that benefit of when you vacuum, you see the benefit right away, right? Uh, there is not this long-term thing, which is um, something along the lines of, uh, you know, cleaning up Bubbly Creek, right? That's decades in the making. Uh, you pick up a bag of garbage uh, and that space is immediately cleaner. So people love to, to stay connected uh, and contribute in those ways. So um, I'm about at time, I'm sure. Um, I've probably gone over, um, but I do want to give everybody a chance just to see uh, ways that you can stay connected with South Branch Park Advisory Council. You can follow us on social media uh, at South Branch PAC, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can also send us an, an email if you're interested. Uh, and we meet the second Wednesday of every other month. Um, and those are the odd months of the year. And then um, there's my phone number there. If ever uh, you're interested in coming out or you have a question for me, you want to learn more about the other things that we do, we do so much. Um, feel free, drop me a line. Uh, I'm happy to take some time and, and talk to whomever uh, might be uh, interested in learning more about what we do, or if you wanna just get more engaged with us, um, I'm happy to, to spend some time. So uh, I will uh, stop my screen share there and um, I will uh, kind of then turn it back to, to you, Aaron. Wow, great job, James. That's a lot of volunteers and who hasn't walked around their neighborhood and noticed different places that need cleaning up like that. Uh, we have a question for you. And if anybody else has any questions, feel free to type them in the chat here and I'll throw you the first one. Uh, we have from Janae, what was your impetus for starting the South Branch PAC? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm someone who wants to give back. I work for a nonprofit professionally. Um, I've worked on political campaigns before. Uh, I've done a lot of volunteering in my time in the world. Uh, I've been trained by the Jesuits and the, um, the Catholics at DePaul University. Uh, you know, I work for a Kennedy now. Uh, so it's to whom much is given, much is expected. Uh, and I try to live that um, all the time. And uh, my wife and I were living in Pilsen at the time. She's from Bridgeport, um, born and raised. and. Um, the, the opportunity to start a park advisory council to me seemed like a great way just to get connected with like the average folks, you know? Um, and um, I knew the boathouse was coming. I thought this was a really great opportunity. 
I didn't know what that meant. I just know I knew those like really two simple things. Um, and uh, I ran with it. And now we're, um, we're doing work um, that's way beyond uh, my pay grade for sure. Um, and we have a huge um, network of folks who are always interested in, in learning and getting involved and, and uh, finding ways to shape the future of our communities for the better. Oh, that's really great. Huh. Well, I think uh, we're gonna transition from there then to our next presentation, which has some overlap with this one. And so I'm going to introduce Mara Moore about our canal cleanup program. And Mara Moore has worked for us for oh, several years now, and we just can't let her go right now. She's technically the program manager for Facing History, a nonprofit in Chicago. Uh, but we, we've kept her on part-time as the communications coordinator for the Canal Corridor Association. And Mara actually recommended James as the speaker for today. And <laughs> So Mara, if you're ready, take it away. Can you all see my screen, my PowerPoint presentation? Thank you. So hello, my name is Mara Moore. And as Aaron said, I have worked for the Canal Corridor Association for about I want to say four or five years now. Um, and I am here to talk to you about our annual INM Canal cleanup that takes place on the trail from LaSalle, Illinois to Rockdale, Illinois. Um, and the picture behind you is just one of our groups that helps clean up the canal every year. Um, so, as I mentioned before, we have 96 miles of trail that we are able to clean up um, between LaSalle and Rockdale and our most popular areas, not only for people walking or biking along the trail, but as well as cleaning up our Shanahan, Ottawa, Morris, Joliet, and LaSalle, which works out really great because those are also the messiest parts of the trail once snow melts and you start spotting all of the trash that has accumulated from over the summer and fall. Um, so we have to help clean up this trail. We have a lot of groups that come. Um, we don't really get a lot of single person um, volunteers to help clean up the trail. Um, so our major groups are would be the Perfectly Flawed Foundation, pictured here, which is located in LaSalle. And every year they help clean up not only the community of LaSalle and Peru, but the section of the trail that's located in LaSalle as well. And then we have the Daughters of the American Revolution that they come out every year um, and clean up the trail between Joliet and Rockdale. And then we just have various park districts along the trail um, lots of boy and girl scout groups that come and get a badge for their community service hours, bike clubs, which they are the main users of the trail. So they like to come and clean that up before their um, annual meetings and um, annual bike rides, as well as various school groups that come. Um, something that started in the past few years is schools in LaSalle, Ottawa, and some high schools in Seneca require volunteer hours every year to move on to the next level. So we're finding lately that that's one of the major um, motivations to get younger kids out is they will volunteer with their student council or their sports team, and they will cover about two or three miles of the trail. And then these are just our statistics through the year. So not counting last year, of course, with the pandemic, but from 2017 to 2019, we have had a total of 559 volunteers um, and they did 1,023 1, hours along the trail as, and they cleaned up 70, 72 miles along the trail, which 
in a two year span is just really amazing. And it shows how involved our communities are and how important the trail is to get people to get outside, how much it matters to actually make a difference in the town by picking up trash. And especially with the smaller kids coming out and cleaning up the trail, like having them just be aware that you know, trash and throwing things out anywhere makes an impact on our community and the environment. Um, we have, so I have also ran the school field trip program to the boat and I have had elementary school, school kids come up and tell me that they cleaned up the trail and because the trail's clean, they are now able to like spot snakes in the water again and like see frogs along the canal, which I always think is very interesting that they are able to make that connection so young. Um, and there are of course issues with cleaning up the trail, even though the amount of mileage that we have had volunteers clean up is very impressive. There are still places along the trail that we are not able to access. Um, so there are parts of the trail that are closed because of construction issues. Um, there are parts of the trail that have like, especially in, I think it was 2009, trees have been fallen over on the trail. So there's just no access. And unfortunately, um, there's not a quick enough way to get those to get chopped down. We have had volunteers that have come in. They're like, I have a saw, like I can remove this tree, but unfortunately that is not possible. It's due to a safety hazard. Um, we also have an issue that's a new issue that's coming up, which is there are areas of the trail where it's not near an access point. So each access point there, there's some distance away. So we don't really have a lot of volunteers who are willing to walk or bike the four miles to get to like a section of the trail that is not taken by a volunteer group. So we are finding that and trying to come up with ways to get those missed areas cleaned up as well. And of course, weather conditions. Um, over the past two years, we have had sections of the trail that are completely washed out due to melting snow, high floods, um, and they're just closed. So luckily we have had a few volunteer groups that have come back in the fall once those issues are resolved and they've cleaned up the trash along the trail, but it's still in spring, especially when those are closed, like by then either more trash has piled up that we're just not able to get to, or things just kind of rot and mold away. So our, our upcoming cleanup, um, which hopefully at this time, I don't believe that there are many parts of the trail that's, that are no longer closed for the cleanup, hopefully, but our upcoming cleanup, we take place every year around Earth Day. So April 10th through 20th, through the 25th, we usually do about a two week span just because it's harder to get um, people to come out and volunteer during the week. So we usually cover both weekends around Earth Day. So if you'd like to volunteer or know someone, they will just have to send us an email saying where they would like to clean up the trail um, and how many miles that they would like to clean up. If it's one mile, that's fine. We've had groups clean up one mile. We've had groups clean up six miles. Um, anything that you can do to help. And then how many people are joining your group? So this helps us not only keep track of how many people are cleaning up the trail, it also helps us provide community service hours and in kind that just help us as an organization as well as we do offer free boat rides um, for all of our volunteers just as a thank you for cleaning up the trail. Um, and it's just like a great community event. We block off the boat for a day and we just have everyone from the cleanup come and 
it's just a wonderful thing to do. So if you would like to join, or if you know anyone who would like to join, they can just email Aaron at his email right here with the information. And I think I went over, but yeah. Thank you, Mara. Great presentation about a program we know and love well here at the Canal Corridor Association. Uh, we've had two great presentations today, and so we're going to get on with our next part, which is a little bit of networking. So that'll give you some time to absorb all the things you've heard today and, and share with all your different peers that are here today with us on the conversation. Uh, if you're running out of things to talk about, I recommend you think about outside right now, which is warm and on my lunch break, I went out and strolled downtown LaSalle and I was not the only one for the first time in months. So I think people are getting ready to get outside. They're ready to have their parks cleaned. They're ready to uh, start visiting places and doing things again. So with that, let's break off into groups and we'll yank you back a few minutes before the hour to close up the meeting and get you home in time for dinner. <laughs>